Stay. Tell me, tell me something good. I used to say that to my dad. But if I told you what he said back, you'd think I was insane. No, that ship has sailed, Clark. When I had a nightmare or something, he used to sing. Go on. He used to sing the Molahonky song. The what? The Molahonky song. I thought everyone knew it. Trust me, Clark, I'm a Molahonky virgin. You can make me sing it now. I will in a shy linen and lived in the mullet honky land. The little land where I lie was taller than the lowest known. So I little I could play the little lay my. You're insane. Your whole family's insane. And you're a god awful singer. I hope your dad was better. I think what you mean to say is thank you, Miss Clark, for attempting to entertain me. Okay, Clark. Tell me something else. Something that doesn't involve singing. About what? Anything. Well, when I was little, my mum got me a pair of glittery wellies and I refused to take them off. I wore them in bed, in the bath, all summer long. My favourite outfit was the glittery boots and my bumblebee tights. Bumblebee tights. Black and yellow stripes. Oh, dear God. <laughs> I just, I really, really, really liked having stripy legs. So what happened to these gorgeous wellies and stripy tights? Ah, uh, I outgrew them. It broke my heart. And they don't make those tights anymore, not for grown women, anyway. Strange, that. Oh, you can mock. Didn't you ever love anything that much? Yes. Yes, I did. Patrick says, they make me look like a leprechaun drag queen. He was being nice. Don't smile at me like that. Why not? Because I don't know what it means. Where did you pick up your exotic tastes? What do you mean by that? It can't be from around here. Why not? Because this is the kind of place people come to when they got tired of actually living. People here think excitement is a new please be quiet sign going up to the library. <laughs> you should be out there claiming the world is your own. Showing your leprechaun shoes to dodgy men. I like my life. You like everything. I'm happy here. Well, you shouldn't be. Oh, you want to be more like the girls you know, do you? I want to go to London, marry somebody like Rupert. I believe he's taken. And ignore the fact that he's shagging his secretary within five years. And bitch about him at dinner parties, knowing he won't leave because he's scared of the alimony and have sex once every six weeks and listen to him going on and on about how much he adores the children while doing nothing to actually take care of them and have perfect hair that get this kind of pinch face through never saying what to actually mean and develop an insane Pilates habit and buy a dog or a horse and develop a crush on a riding instructor and watch your husband take up jogging when he hits 40 and buy a Harley and know that every day he goes into the office and looks at the young men and feels like somehow he got suckered and leave him anyway and come back here to give the children a happy childhood. Whoa. There are a lot of divorce handovers at the cafe. Sorry. How did you end up in that cafe? Trina made a bet that I couldn't get a job in 24 hours. I proved her wrong. And stayed there six years. Way to go. I was supposed to leave. I uh, had a place at Manchester. What were you going to study? Fashion. Uh, so why didn't you go? You know what I see when I look at you? Don't say potential. Potential. You need to widen your horizons, Clark. You only get one life. It's actually your duty to live it as fully as possible. Well, you need a shave. If that beard gets any longer, I'll be picking food out of it. And then I'll have to sue you for undue distress in the workplace. You're changing the subject. Yes, I am. Fine. I'll let you. <laughs>